So welcome to my talk, um, Understanding and Improving Samba File System, File Server, sorry, File Server Performance, um, and how I fell in love with System Tab and Perf. My name is Ralf Böhme, and I'm a member of the Samba team since a few years now. I think I'm probably still the youngest Samba team member of all the Samba team folks, at least in this room. Probably. Hi. Yeah, but you're, I think you're a year longer than I am. I think. Yeah, 2014. I think so. 2014, 2015, that would be two years now, then I'm probably longer than you. <laughs> so, all right, yeah, I, I work for Cernan. And so, like with every true romance and love story, the question is um, when did I fall in love? How did this happen? And this actually started uh, last year um, when I was given the, the task by, by a customer of us, actually, um, to work on Samba file server performance on metadata intensive workloads, um, more precisely, just small file copy. Just take 1,000 files, copy them to the server, and now please make that faster. Um, I knew by then the first thing. I was going to do was to use uh, profiling. I mean, because uh, Samba is, I don't know, two million lines of code. Large part of that is in the, in the Active Directory domain controller. But the file server itself, it's really huge. And maybe if the task would have given to Metzer or Volker, they would have sit in their dark chamber, think hard for a day or two, then come up with a clever solution and be done. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, I thought, okay, let's do some profiling. And um, so I started to do some research at that time, um, started the journey at looking and doing some research on uh, what profiling tools are available on Linux um, these days, profiling and tracing, and that is where the journey started. So just a, a disclaimer. Um, in this talk, I will focus on in user space. Samba is a user space application. Um, current space is different. Um, you will be able to use all the all the traces I'm going to talk about um, that I'm going to mention for tracing current stuff as well. But that's really not uh, not my primary focus here. Um, so user space, not kernel, and mostly Linux. I don't know. Uh, any FreeBSD guys around here, um, they will be happy as well because um, when I'm talking about system tap and how I want to integrate uh, that with Samba, you will be able to use that on FreeBSD as well. But the tracing and profiling stuff that I'm going to introduce is uh, Linux only. So I'm going to begin with a Linux tracing history to the force before I get to show you how I was using Perf then last year to do profiling. Then after doing profiling with Perf, I continued my research and I discovered System Tab, which is awesome. So that's the second part. I will be talking about System Tab. And finally, um, I will be highlighting the, the, the Samba file server improvements that I achieved at the end of the month, I think it was, or the journey, a love story that lasted a month. What's that? <laughs> um, so, and the key takeaway uh, I want you, if you go out of this talk, is just to remember at the end that Linux tracing has evolved. In the 90s, we had those, those poor guys there. In the kernel, ptrace and proc. ptrace for providing um, on top, strace, the Cisco tracer is built, and proc for all the top VM start, IO start, and so forth tools which is built. But that was essentially it. Um, these days, we have a full suit of uh, different 
these are actually names of, of the software projects. Um, of the project parts live in user space, parts are frameworks in the kernel, um, but these are the names of the, of the whole, of the projects. And um, not all of them are still under active development. Stuff like KTAB or Heatrace for Linux, which is probably dead by now. But all the others are under active development. Ftrace, Perf Events, eBPF, uh, which is short for Enhanced Berkeley Packet Filters, System Tab, LTTNG, and Sysdic. Uh, those are probably relevant. The others like uh, KTAB and Heatrace for Linux. And OEL Dtrace, uh, which is Oracle Enterprise Linux Dtrace, which is under active de development, but is uh, is only available on. Sorry. The vanish the, the video. Okay. So let's try to start this work. No. Oh, shame. I got three. So. The key point is we have superpowers. On the, these days, we have tracing superpowers on Linux. And I want you to remember, when you ever get into a situation, um, oh, sorry. When you ever get into, into a situation where you think, I got this strange performance problem here. Am I ever going to solve this? Yes, these days, you can. Um, just remember when you need it, um, look back at the slides, choose one of the tracers, you don't even have to pick the traces I'm mentioning here. The others are um, different animals, but they achieve the same thing. So um, yeah, that's the thing. I don't expect you to be able to, uh, to, to run all the commands I'm presenting here and to, to run the tracers immediately. Just remember, they are there. So just a brief uh, Linux tracing timeline. While I was at it, I collected the dates. Um, at the beginning in the 90s, yeah, the static tracers, PROC, F-trace is called, and that was essentially it. And then it started in 2000 with LTT, then it went on, K-probes, which is already one of the guys that is uh, out of the kernel again, or at least depreciated as far as I remember. Then we had D-trace, of course not on Linux at that time, but on for Solaris, but uh, I wanted to mention that because it was kind of the the benchmark for, for tracing tools. And then it went on and one and one, and um, one tracing tool piled up on the other, system tab, LTTNG, F-trace, and so on and so on. Um, it's, it's, really, it's really amazing um, how much stuff there is um, when, when working on the presentation. And I kept adding slides and adding slides, and hey, I want to make some more details on F-trace and some more details on this, and I ended up with 64 slides for the presentation at the end. So. And I thought, okay, <laughs> oops, sorry. I have, to, I have to remove a few of them. So um, I'm not going into any details for, for, for the traces. I'm not, uh, besides proof and, and system tab, um, it's not because they are not good, it's just because the time is not enough to, 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 to talk about them all. Um, yeah, just briefly highlighting um, what can be done uh, with tools these days. Um, it starts like you can just count, count raw hardware CPU events, um, like CPU cycles, uh, branch misses, frontline stalls. These are all events you get from the uh, so-called um, CPU PMU, uh, which is a performance uh, short for the performance monitoring unit in the, in the CPU. Um, you can trace syscalls, but just more efficiently. More on that later. Um, you can actually trace at the source code level by symbol. So for example, by, by function name. You just say, hey, I have this interesting function, and I want to add the trace point to my application at this function. You can even do that by function, by source code, file name, and line number, and say, hey, I want to add the trace point to my application at that exact point. And, and get a handler fired that then does some crazy stuff. Um, you can do, and this is already done, um, in large parts of the Linux kernel and in quite a few libraries, uh, provide a stable trace point ABI. Um, kernel and user space, kernel, I already mentioned that, and user space, for example, the glibc, um, the glib, uh, lib, uh, the thread library 
they all already do provide static trace points, which means um, these static, so-called static trace points, they just have a name. Like, for example, trace points in the libp thread, um, they use um, a few uh, a, 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 a part that is a name that is put together of, of several parts, and you start like p thread dot um, thread create or whatever. Um, I think they have trace points for um, tracing um, mutex contention in the p thread library, um, and so you can sort of like provide a stable trace point ABI in your applications that users then can consume and can rely on um, in contrast to the tracing at the raw source code level because source code can change. So if you, if you write some, some script um, where you say, hey, I want to trace my application and I know uh, I have the source code and so I can look and I know uh, at, at source file dot C at line 100, that's an interesting, interesting point, and I want a trace point there. I want some, I want some uh, um, probe even handler to be called at that point. Uh, you can do that, but whenever the, the source code changes, your tracing script is void. So um, having a method to provide a stable trace point, ABI, is a really cool thing. Um, yeah, so we have trace points in the application. You have trace handlers that are called when trace point fires, and you can do then fancy stuff in some of those tracing tools. Uh, tracing tools. Um, you just can do counting of events. Um, and some of the, the tracing tools I'm going to introduce, um, especially System Tab, has some very powerful and uh, very easily usable um, statistics tools for, um, for example, yeah, to, to, do, to do statistics and do histograms and stuff. So um, that's easily programmable. Um, yeah, j just to mention that uh, some stuff like DPF and Ftrace and uprobes and whatever uh, might not be present on the uh, SLES or uh, RHEL of on your system, on older systems. It might require a new account, so you have to be careful, you have to check. But generally, most tools are available since quite a few years, so if it's a reason enough kernel, it should be there and work part of the box. So, is that any right to the state of response you have to change your Yes, yes. Uh, I have an example on that, on, on that later. Sorry. So, um, the whole zoo of uh, software projects that I, that I showed earlier, um, they actually use a, a smaller set of, of common intro, uh, in kernel of the, the frameworks that are actually in the kernel and provide the, the tracing stuff and to, to get the terminology here. Um, these are called static trace points, which are those that you insert, actually code, macros, whatever you put it into your application or that are in the kernel. Um, you have dynamic trace points, which use uh, two kernel frameworks that are called k-probes and u-probes. Um, those are the ones that, yeah, for, I mean, you can use debug symbols. They make, make it possible that you can use debug symbols, dwarf debug symbols to, to add trace points. But you can actually um, work at the raw um, offset from object files. You can actually provide a binary uh, raw number objects in the of, of the offset of some offset in an object file, and that would uh, add in um, a trace point to 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 an object file, <coughs> not necessarily by dwarf uh, symbol name. There's perf events which started to be um, doing the um, performance monitoring unit, uh, performance monitoring unit uh, CPU stuff. So the hardware and, and software events from the from the from the raw CPU. Um, and as of late, the, the, the latest addition to the kernel, I think, is uh, BPF, which was previously uh, named uh, Enhanced BPF. Uh, so that just turned now into, into BPF or Berkeley Packet Filter. Um, those are the, the big four in the kernel that actually do provide the, the frameworks in the kernel that then are used in different ways from user space uh, tracing <coughs> tools. Um, so the nice thing about all this is um, compared, for example, to the venerable peak trace, which sucks from a performance wise, all these are low overhead when enabled for trace point and zero overhead when not enabled for trace point. 
except, and that's the bad news, um, for U probes and uh, user space uh, statically defined trace points, short USDT, uh, which is the stuff that is, of course, uh, that is um, of interest for Samba because we are in user space, so we so we're using U probes and USDT, and for those. Uh, every enabled uh, trace point results in a context switch into, into the code. So that has some overhead that uh, gets noticeable if you trace, for example, uh, all, all syscalls in an application that makes heavy use of syscalls, for example, Samba. So um, we have to be a bit careful about that. Um, so let's go briefly over, I mean, I've, already mentioned this um, before now over the course of the talk, but um, let's go over it again. Um, the type of events that the kernel frameworks provide, the terminology is now uh, CPU hardware events, CPU software events. The framework that does this is from the previous slide, Perf events. Um, we have the trace point events, which again are the static, actual static code that you put into applications or in, in, in the kernel. Um, we have dynamic tracing, um, which is provided by K probes and U probes. And of course, we have time events. Hey, yeah. So you can say, hey, I just want an event a thousand times a second at some frequency or whatever. And that's, of course, commonly used for, for stuff like profiling. Yeah. So, just two out of a bunch of nine. And these are the, both the two guys. I'm going to talk about in, in more details. Um, those two guys, Ftrace and BPF, are some uh, are, are two that uh, you may keep an eye on and keep in mind that they might be interesting as well. Uh, BPF, together with, and that's actually a different project, uh, the BCC, it's the Berkeley, no, the, the BPF compiler collection. Um, so a BPF, I uh, mentioned before, is uh, originated um, in the, the Berkeley packet filter. Um, and BCC is the BPF compiler connection. BPF originated as a technology, I gotta read that, I don't have that in my mind, as a technology for optimized packet filtering. If you run TCP dump with an expression matching on a host or port, it gets compiled into, yeah, into bytecode, um, which is then executed by in kernel sandbox virtual machine. So that happens if you run TCP dump. Now, this stuff, the BPF stuff, got, got enhanced, that's why the enhanced BPF came from. Um, so, BPF virtual machine could do something else. It was allowed to run events other than uh, um, run on events other than, than packet and packet filtering, and do actions other than filtering. Just run arbitrarily handler, handlers. Um, and it's it's really nice, um, cool stuff. I haven't looked into much detail of it because what I saw made me sort of run away, because it's not really that easy to use. Um, when I am going to show some details about how to use the system tab, from my point of view, it's really like, you, you, you see that and you think, ah, that's nice, I'm going to use that. Um, not so much with this one. And from the functionality perspective, I don't see any real gaps in system tab uh, at the moment that would require me to, to, to look at something else and to um, actively work with it and trying to understand if it provides something else. But um, I'm just mentioning this one here just so you keep an eye on it. Uh, similar for Ftrace, um, I, I've seen that named on a, on a website as the kernel hacker's best friend. It's uh, built into the kernel since quite a long time. Um, it, it can use all the mentioned kernel tracing frameworks and it provides most, uh, it can consume all, all, the, all the event types I mentioned. Um, it can do some stuff that other simple tracers uh, like um, Perf uh, can't do. Um, it has optional filters, it can, um, it can work with uh, um, function arguments and, and return values, and I think it also has access to a function state, like, like internal variables of function. So um, it can do quite some stuff. Um, it wasn't really programmable un until, recently, until recently, and you couldn't use statistics uh, like, you, like you can with system tab, more on that later. Um, but that changed recently. So Ftrace is now, uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, these days, as of today, we have just three tools that essentially all can do the same. They just look different. 
just three different animals. Um, I started working with system tape, and I still would <laughs> recommend everybody who's starting to, to look for a usable tracer who is capable of looking deeply into the system, use system tap because it's really easy to use. Yeah, I choose for user space like Samba. Choose per for CPU profiling, system tap for all the rest. I already said that. Um, look at the others when something is missing, or you feel like it. But keep an eye on, on DPS. When, yeah. So well, next is uh, per. Any, any questions? Yeah. Okay. So, um, perf. Um, the original name was just, was perf events, which is still the name for the kernel subsystem. Uh, the user space tool is just called perf, mm. and it supports counting events of all different types I mentioned. Um, and it can do profile, which is what I'm going to describe here. Um, how how easily it's really it's how nice and, and, and good is uh, pro for, for profiling. Um, it's it's not programmable and has no built-in statistics and aggregations. Um, though this again this changed j just very recently by the with by, um, support for BPF um, was added in in. in, in in the back end. Um, yeah, and you can instrument so the CPU performance counters, the PMU, uh, the trace points, and the K-probes and, and U-probes. So the all, essentially all, all different ev event types are traceable with perf events. Um, I never actually really used that uh, in, in, a, in a real situation. I only really use perf for profiling. Um, when I looked last year, um, there are other profilers for Linux. Um, there's, of course, a GNU GProf, but that sucks because you have to do special compilation of your, of your application um, to get it working. There's, of course, the very cool uh, well grind, ball grind, but that makes your application really weak. Really so, so that was not an option. Uh, there's OProfile, um, <coughs> which is a mature and established tool. Um, any one of you actually ever used OProfile? You did? You liked it? It was alright. All right. Okay. Yeah, it, it, did, it did work for me. Um, I tried in a VM. It didn't work there, and so I never actually looked deeply into it. So. Um, I came across Perf, and that's where I still am. Um, where do you get it? Well, you install Perf, or if get install Linux tools if you're if you're on Ubuntu or Debian. Um, usually when, when profiling an application, you usually want uh, not uh, raw addresses, you want symbol names. Um, so um, if you're compiling from source, add compile with debug symbols. Uh, if you're installing from package, uh, make, make sure to install the debug info or debug uh, packages. And then we can get started actually with a key selling point of Perf, um, with this, uh, which is the text-based interactive interface to display um, the profile. The command for that is uh, Perf report, so uh, for looking into the profile data. Um, I've prepared this year for a demo. The command for actually profiling an application is perf record. I'm not going to show that here. You just do perf record. You do dash G uh, in order to, to request um, post stack profiling information. And you just, then you just add dash P and the PID. And that's it. You keep it running. Uh, the profile application is unaffected performance wise, more or less. Might slow down a few percent, but it's really not really noticeable. Um, because the, pro the, the recording of the, the profiling is done at some frequency that's by default, I think, uh, 999 hertz. So um, it has some impact, but it's not much. And the interesting stuff then comes if you look into the profiling information with the uh, report. So let's try to get the demo running.
Я Я Is this now? I tested this before. Is this? Oh no, this is small. So okay, it was messed up. So I will increase this. To larger, but then. Is that big enough? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah, perf reports. Um, these, I'm, I'm specifying an option here um, dash G, graph, zero, caller. These are actually the default options. Um, I'm not going to explain them here. I just run command and we see, look at the output. Uh, on this, come on. Essentially, perf report. Ignore the rest. Dash G, uh, graph, zero, yeah, what, color. What was the data? <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a data file. It's a perf data file, which uh, by default is in the same direction of the file. Yeah. I was trying to explain that uh, just a few <laughs> minutes ago that I uh, actually yeah, um, <coughs> traced an um, SMBD process while I was just copying files locally over loopback mount or on an SMB session, I just ran perf record dash G on the PID for a few seconds. And that got me a this one perf data file. And now when I run this command, it will process uh, the profiling information of the perf data file. So here we are processing events. There we are. So. Um, we have lines, we have rows, uh, rows, right? Uh, rows, rows, rows. Let's go through them. Um, so, leftmost, um, we have children, and that's the default sort column. Um, in this column, we have function name, and the children column includes um, the percentage of CPU time spent of the function on the right, um, including recursively all children. This is the default view, which immediately gives you displays um, some random function that you want to look at. Interesting in Samba is, for example, I don't know, SMBD process. And this function, including all call function recursively. Why is it made at 100? It's a bug in current perp. In current perp. If you look at um, main at 45 and you look at entry syscall fast path, 52, it doesn't uh, match exactly up to 100%. Um, there's probably some other stuff. Um, it up as well. The problem is there is currently a bug in kernel, uh, a, a bug in perf, that results in um, the, uh, the, the 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 call stack, the call chain split up at the kernel boundary. So essentially, that means that currently in perf, um, all all time spent in the syscalls is not attributed to user space function. So, for example, if we have a function like uh, Samba function, a user space application function, I don't know anything. Yeah, this one here, request dispatch. Um, that's the core SMB2 processing function in Samba. When we get the request from SMB2 clients, then depending on the SMB2 request code, create, get info, set info, close, whatever, then we just, uh, let's look at that. Go in there, dispatch. These are the functions that are called depending on the on the SMB2 command. Um, and we're certainly doing quite a lot of, of, of system, system calls in all those functions. Um, and unfortunately, currently, um, all the time spent in the syscalls is not correctly attributed to the function or to the user space function that actually called it, which is very bad. But, um, I, I sent out a mail and opened a bug report. I haven't heard back yet. Don't know when it will be fixed, but hopefully 
some time. Uh, when I worked with Perf last year, I, d I didn't notice that. It, was, it, mu it must have been working um, at that time. Um, just when I started working on the presentation, started working on the presentation a few months ago, I, I noticed that and thought, hey, what, am I doing something wrong? What is going on? Uh, but I couldn't fix it, so um, it's a bug currently. And so this is the actual thing that I really find absolutely amazing about Perf. This user interface where you just can recursively drill into functions. Like for example, where I've been before, the request dispatch function. You go in there, you see, oh, there's a lot of time spent in process create out of 36% in request dispatch, 21% is spent in process create. And you can drill down and drill down and until you find maybe a spot where you think, hey, that's strange. Why do we spend so much time on that function? Let's look at the code or whatever. And what helps a lot with that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm always forgetting to add that. Um, it has an option to, to actually display the number of, of, of events that were uh, recorded in a, in a specific function. It's minus E for events or something like that that you have to. I mean, you can actually try to find that out. Ah, oh wait, no, it's not even perfect. It's a report, of course. So uh, let me see if I find that. It's a large main page, so you're giving me a hard time here <laughs> hooking up the option, but maybe I can find it. But it definitely has, has the, the option too, then. Show info. Ah, uh, sorry. Can't find it right now, but it is there. <coughs> Have you seen a first top? Uh, yes, of course, but that is moving too fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cool for demos, though. Yeah, it's, it's cool for, for demos, of course. I can, we can do that. Perf top. Uh, so this traces the whole system, all processes, all processors on the whole system. Uh, like top, it updates once a second, um, sorting by, um, again, the CPU percentage uh, spent in functions, including the kernel, but uh, it moves. So just by running for report on an existing trace file, we, you are in control. And what I now wanted to show you is, um, say you have a function where you are suspecting mm, that is taking quite a lot of time. What is going on? Um, I'm, you can, so I'm, I'm just filtering here. Um, enter the function name, so I'm filtering um, the, the symbols by, by just a string I, I entered. So which takes us to db wrap fetch lock. I can again recursively drill into it, um, which is not uh, that interesting. That is not what I wanted to show you. Um, you can look here how much time is spent there in the in, in, in call functions um, and continue to drill down. You have uh, stuff where we're using talloc, which is uh, the allocation library in, in Samba. Um, the really cool stuff is when you have a function and you expect oh, yeah, there's something strange and you then think, hmm, wait, from where is this function actually called? So you just go out and you replace the caller with callee, which inverts the call chain. Filter again on the function of interest, or look it up somehow, db web fetch lock. So now you drill inside, voila. You get a list of the functions that are actually calling that one. So at the point, we see, uh, whoop, the web fetch lock that looks like it's somehow doing recursive stuff. Um, but uh, from, for the Samba guys here, that's probably more apparent um, that this is a central D, um, database API function we use in Samba, the DB Rep API, and it's called for from leases TBM, so for leases stuff. Um, it's for the from uh, get share mode lock, uh, which is for the locking TDB where we store the open file handle stuff and so forth, wide range locks and all that. Um, so 
I'm not just highlighting this because there's something uh, interesting, a performance bug here, performance regression I want to show you. I just wanted to show you this, this possibility of really recursively um, looking at um, how the functions either just look what the function inside is doing or look from where a function it is called and how much time that takes. Yeah, that's essentially it about Perf. It's simple to use, and when I was um, working on, on, on the code and looking for places to optimize, that was all I needed. I just looked for functions where I hadn't, I mean, I had some vague ideas at times about what, what a specific function should do, and so I uh, could easily, so I could spot that, made aware that um, Maybe this function is taking a little bit more time than I was maybe anticipating, and, and start from there. Have you got an example of, of one that, because I thought there was one that you optimized recently. Yes, it's exactly, yeah. yeah. So I, do, I don't really have that, that example pre bad now, and, and I don't remember the function name, where, where that was. But that's, I, I'm, I'm going to mention that at the very end of the talk, yeah, it's uh, this optimization for, for the exclusive leases. Stuff, that one, yeah, but I don't remember the, the function name where it was, yeah. But there was an, yeah, there was an example of, uh, of something I actually found last year, uh, no, this year at Samba XP, yeah. this year at Samba XP, um, where I noticed that we were spending like five, I think it was five or even more percent of CPU uh, in, the op in, in the leases subsystem in Samba. And from looking at the network trace, I knew um, that the client had an exclusive lease, uh, a handle lease and on, on, on that file. So um, in, in the code, we have optimizations for that case that did work for op locks, but not leases, uh, which in the optimization goes like this. If uh, the file handle that is uh, associated with the open um, says, hey, I'm an exclusive type, there is no need to actually look into the leases database because we know there can't be any other lease that might co uh, conflict with an additional requested lease or something like that. So, but we did that for, we had this working optimization for op but it didn't work for leases, which cost something like 5 or 10% CPU. Sorry? I thought it was, you can check checks. I think it was actually in the, um, in the leases uh, subsystem for, for on the leases database, not on the budget check, but might be both. Actually, it might, might have been on, in, in both subsystems. What time? Oh, I think I should, yeah. I should, I, I, we have system tab left to cover, so. <laughs> yeah, just one last question, Jeremy. No, I'm just wondering yeah. if you could use this to find color hotspots um, that might be then replaced with a pool, et cetera. Uh, yes, yes, de enough. yes, definitely, you can, yeah. Um, you just go into the filter by Talak functions, you drill down there, and, and then but, cool. yeah, yeah. but according to the perf profiles, the, the Talak, so the Talak is the memory allocation system uh, library that we use in Samba, and um, I never really spotted any, um, uh, any function where this, in, in the C CPU profile there was a noticeable uh, value that was more than uh, yeah. a fraction of a percent. So, uh, but, if you're going for micro percent optimizations that might add up, um, that's probably something that could be pursued, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead with the uh, system tab. All right, system tab. Does it work now? No, okay. Yeah. Oh, system tab. Um, I'm just quoting here because I couldn't say it better. Um, system tab provides a simple command line interface and scripting language, scripting language, this is very important, for writing instrumentation for a live running kernel, which is not so interesting for us, and user space applications. Um, the essential idea of system tab is that you name events, so you give them names, and then you give them handlers. Um, whenever a specified event occurs, the kernel runs that handler. It is important, the kernel runs the handler. So we are uh, instrumenting user space application, but as mentioned before, the kernel runs the handler. So uh, for every uh, fired um, event probe in your application, you take a context switch into the kernel. And 
Yeah, you write the event handlers in the system tab script language, um, which is C-like with type inference, um, but safe, hopefully, uh, with built-in runtime safety checks. Um, the script associates handlers with probes, and this is the basic syntax. Uh, the keyword is probe, uh, event is a name, and a handler is a function where you write the code that does whatever you want. You can do a printf or something, you can count, you can do statistic aggregations, um, what's appropriate for the task. There are several varieties of supported events, essentially all uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, uh, like timers, system calls, of course, trace points, dwarfs, so k-probes, u-probes, with dwarf debug symbols, perf events, if you're interested in more uh, CPU hardware uh, or software events, and then you have uh, uh, begin and end events, which are executed at the, at the beginning or, or the end of the, of the script. And now in the handler you can do, yeah, it's, it's a full, um, imperative programming language, actually. So in the handler, you can do whatever you want. Um, you can have, you can do filtering, conditionals, variables. You have primitive variables like numbers of strings, asso associative arrays, and you can do uh, statist statistical aggregations, which are, which I will show an example later on, which is a really, really useful, easily be feature to get um, statistical information. And you have a whole bunch of helper functions. Um, like just printf if you want to print something or debugging or whatever, uh, get time of day and so forth. Um, and then when you have the script, you use the so-called the, the, the command to execute the script is stab. Um, the stab command takes your script and the whole, and the, and the oh, five minutes, goodness. <laughs> and the script um, is translated to C. Um, the C code is actually compiled into a kernel module. I got speed for a moment. Um, the kernel loads the module, enables the probes uh, in, in the object files that you actually requested the, the trace points, inserting jumps, uh, which are cheap, but that's only done in the kernel. For user space, uh, that, those are breakpoints, so that's where the, we get from user space to, to kernel. Uh, like mentioned before, with one of debug symbols, you actually can uh, probes, um, trace points, just by, by file, file name and line number. Um, it supports associative arrays, so you can easily can do statistics. Um, and what's also nice is that the, in the probe handlers you have um, full access to the state of the function that you're tracing, like local variables and arguments and return values if you're tracing the return point of a function. Um, so here's um, a way that is maybe uh, nice to, to see um, that it's how you can list all the available trace points that's actually here just from the kernel. Kernel functions, kprobe functions, kernel trace, and the perf trace points. And there are a lot. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure actually um, the... Um, Kernel function, the first one, with 54,000 uh, trace points. And uh, that is supposed to be um, actual just function name from dwarf debug symbols from the kernel, which should mean that in the Linux kernel we currently have 54 functions. Does anyone know, does that number match? Should, should it be more? I would have expected it would be more, but maybe, I don't know. Um, and all that is, um, if you start working with it, I recommend looking at man s -tab probes, which is quite large, but it explains in good detail and um, manageable pieces, and it's good understandable um, how to use the, the, the s -tab probes. So, an example. Um, this is Hello World in System Tab. Um, you have a probe begin, you have a probe end. Probe begin is executed at the beginning of the script, probe end at the end. So you run s -tab Hello World, you get Hello World at the beginning, you hit Control C to stop the script, and it says goodbye. Um, so this gives just to give you a basic idea of, of the syntax. Um, it's just probe for the keyword, the trace point name, and then the, the, the handler you want to execute on the trace point is hit. 
Um, so let's do something slightly more interesting. Um, this one is uh, syscall uh, sysco tracing with some statistics. Like um, I'm tracing the in bold here, the p write Cisco when it returns. So when it returns, we can look at the return value, which for p write is the number of bytes written. Um, I could also use the p write the function entry point, but uh, return is an interesting um, trace point here um, that is called when um, some function of Cisco actually returns. And now we can just reuse this um, special dollar return variable, um, which is the return value of the function. And we just sum that up in the bytes uh, in the bytes written variable. Right? And at the end, um, after running the script, we can say, "Hey, how many bytes total bytes written did we have while while running the script?" The syntax for um, tracing a specific process by PID is a little bit strange. With STAP, you use that dash x and then the PID, and that requires this. Um, in the, in the trace handler, the if PID equals target. Uh, the target, um, it's a function here, um, returns um, the value of the dash x. So that's used to, to match up um, the probe handler fired, uh, if it actually matches the, um, the PID that was requested on the command line. Um, now to something else, uh, which is a user space. Um, tracing user space function by name. In this case, we've seen it before in Perf. Um, I'm tracing the function SMBD, SMB2 request dispatch, which is the, the core SMB2 request um, dispatch function. And just count the requests. I have a variable there, SMB2 underscore, uh, uh, underscore request plus plus. And at the end, probe end, I just print the number of requests I've seen. Simple example, just to show, give you an idea um, what you can do. In this case, just counting events uh, of some random function you might be interested in in the application. Um, so next is, um, we've talked about that before. Michael asked, who is now falling asleep, <laughs> um, is how to actually, how do you actually put those static trace points in your applications? Um, you just put some macro in there, of course. Um, I called them Samba probe. Um, you, you pass two names, SMB2 request start, with, uh, which are just uh, two identifiers you pass um, and that you later then use when, when probing and tracing. And then you can uh, additionally uh, add an arbitrary number of arguments. In this case, um, I'm passing two arguments, and I also have to pass the number of arguments I'm passing. So that's where the two comes from. Um, and the arguments I'm passing is the, 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 um, the request ID, the packet number, and the SMB2 uh, mid, and the actual request code, SMB2 lock. Um, that comes from, because this is in a special function where we reprocess block locks, so I know that's, uh, what, uh, what the opcode is. Um, in the core processing function, that would be just passing the opcode that we get from the wire. And this Samba probe Marco um, is then internally um, translated um, at the end to detrace probe. So after macro replacement, um, we then have, have detrace probes in the source, which means um, system tab, we include the system tab header here, sysstt h. Um, it provides those convenience um, redefinitions of detrace probe to stab probe, which is understood by stab. But detrace probe is, of course, understood by, by, by detrace, which means um, having some uh, detrace probe um, and using the detrace probe mark in your code makes it possible to use the trace points from both uh, system tab and detrace on Solaris or FreeBSD. And the rest, uh, the rest of the uh, magic here is just in order to avoid uh, bit rot uh, when um, Samba is not compiled with system tab support. Um, so that we are sure that the arguments we are passing, if, it, if those are variables, that they are actually not removed by some commit and are not existing anymore, just to prevent it rot. That's why the additional layer here of uh, Marco will be different comes from. So another example of now using this uh, new USDT probe we just put into application. Um, 
that's the line in bold where we say pro process, uh, where we actually pass have to pass the full up, um, the full path to the to the object where this trace point is in. And in this case, uh, this lives in an, in a library in libsmb base samba 4so um, and then we say provider smb2 and mark request start. And those are the two two strings that we've seen here two slides ago. Um, SMB2 request start. That's how it matches up. This is in the code, and this is how we use it then in the script. And this just just the same. It just counts events. So those were just a few examples. When I noticed how 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 easily this is really to to trace an application by adding trace points or just by using function names, I, I just started to hack and write. Tracing scripts for for SMBD. I also have written some for tracing the uh, the gang cache subsystem uh, in Samba, which is a caching layer we use. Uh, I also done that for for Winbind. Uh, but in this case, um, I then wrote a script, a system tab script to trace SMBD. I call it TSMBD, and it looks like this when you call it. Um, essentially, you uh, it's currently limited to tracing a single a single SMBD process. Uh, it could be a, Extended to trace all running SMBD process, but currently it's only tracing a single one. You pass the PID, um, you start it, let it collect trace data. You wait, and at some point when you're done, you control C, and that's the that's the output. Just the first lines. It, just, it says you just uh, how long I've been running, which is uh, useful information, especially if you correlate that, for example, with um, time waiting for events, which is um, essentially tracing the, 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 the event library we use in Zamba, um, where I'm actually tracing just how long are we sleeping there in the, for example, Paul or ePaul syscall, waiting for events to arrive over the, net, the, the network or some other event file descriptor, and how long have you been, have you, yeah, how long have you been waiting there? Um, I then also measured just the time in the receive, uh, in, the, in the network receive function, for example, for uh, for receiving SMB2 packets, the same for then sending them out, and in between, just for really running the SMB2 requests and ex actually running the, the the code that does the processing of the SMB request. I split that up. Um, we also have time waiting for CTDB if it's a cluster and um, you have to send requests to CTDB and wait for the responses that would show up there as well. Um, in this version, we still have the time in syscalls um, there, total total time in this, this calls. Um, it doesn't include uh, disk I.O. and uh, read and write, which comes uh, below. Um, it's just all, all the other syscalls. But um, as I said before, tracing syscalls from user space is still expensive. It's way better than with uh, what you can do with the ptrace and strace command, but it still has, some, has, has an impact. If you do it on a single process, it's okay, it has, and um, I think it has a performance impact. I measured that once of like 20 or 30 percent. But um, once I mean, I want to do that, uh, extend TSMBD to, to be able to also trace all running T, um, SMBD processes and, and provide statistics of that, um, then the, 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 the impact of tracing really all syscalls becomes noticeable on the system. So um, I probably have to put that behind an option. At the moment, it's done by default. Yeah, so we have the number of T event events of the number of SMB2 requests, number of CDB2 requests, which is zero. Um, it's continued here on the next page. Um, I'm, of course, also just counting the individual uh, SMB2 requests. Create, close that info, which was uh, taken here at this place. You have the count of, of, of packets. Um, you have the total time of spend for the individual SMB2 function. You have an average, minimum, and maximum for the individual SMB2 request. And you would have the same for CDDB if it would be a cluster. And then this is optional with dash D uh, for distribution. Um, if you can, a service time histogram per, per request, actually. So this would be here for, for the create operation, SMB2 create operation. Um, yes, yeah, so um, summary. It's a nice and detailed high level overview, and it's not intrusive, as long as you stay away from syscalls, or at least not trace syscalls of all SMBD processes. It's actually only 356 lines of code, so it's not really that big to order to get some quite uh, high-level overview, useful information of uh, what is uh, SMB2 is, is doing when it's processing SMB2 requests. And much of that is just boilerplate stuff for, for the probe. Like probe uh, 
name and then the handlers do some counting and then it's just repeated. Um, yeah, I've mentioned tracing too much details like uh, syscalls does have a performance impact and I'm planning to extend that to trace all SMBT sessions, not just one. Yes. So actually, um, this part should have come before system tab because I never actually used system tab to, to work out the SMBD performance improvement. Yeah, last slide. Okay. Last slide. SMBD performance improvement. So um, we had, which is not really related, but I mentioned it here. For clustered Samba, we have an improvement for faster directory enumeration. So for anyone uh, running a CDDB, Samba CDDB cluster, um, I made an improvement for the, which not not with perf or system tab or anything, just coding uh, strange stuff, uh, making the uh, sticky write time uh, fetching asynchronous from CDDB, uh, and that gave I, I did some testing for like a directory with thousand files, um, and the enumeration time went from something like ten seconds to three, so uh, it's quite a speed up. Um, we have a new m m new option for name mangling. Um, it's, uh, the setting is mangled names illegal. And I think we missed to make that the default for 4.7. We, we should have done. We should do it for 4.8, yeah. Because it's it, yeah. it, yeah. We're not sure. Yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah. Well, I think Carolyn, she's, oh, she's not here. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're wasting um, uh, quite a lot of CPU for um, um, uh, computing mangled names for names that are longer than uh, uh, 8.3 DOS uh, length, uh, DOS file name length um, um, limit. Um, that's not required for, for modern Windows client, and for example, Windows doesn't do that as well. Um, in the file system, it's done in the file system, there, not in the file server. Uh, but we're still doing that um, for any name that is longer than 8.3, even though it doesn't really contain any. Uh, illegal NTFS characters like an asterisk or whatever, which we are, must avoid sending to Windows 10. So this new setting gives you, saves you a, a few percent on the CPU. Um, Jeremy uh, did an amazing job of plumbing struct this in the file name uh, through the whole uh, VFS layer in Samba, uh, which made it um, attached to the struct this in the file name is the stat info of the of the file or directory. Um, we didn't have that before available in, in, in all VFS functions, so occasionally in the VFS functions we had to do an additional stat that could be avoided if we would be passing the struct SMB file name uh, onto the VFS uh, consistently. Uh, and thanks to Jer Jeremy, we now have that, so with that we were able to avoid some redundant stats in a few places. Um, in the GPFS, and so anyone here running GPFS, we have uh, module improvements there, improvements in the messaging. Famous last words, just a few last words. Yeah. Um, we have the exclusive piece of optimizations we talked about before. And so with that, we went from something like small file copy workload, that was all about, from something like 100 tricks, 136 files per second to 151. So it's a 10% performance improvement. So we're not going up through the roof, but we are 10% faster just by doing some micro optimizations in, in several places. Some links? So, oh, I'm done. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know if we have time. For <laughs>